Hi there, welcome back to Scribbles and Inkstands. My name is Mary, and today is my review of all nine pens, fountain pens, that I inked in January, and a reflection on what worked, what didn't, and I feel like I had the whole range of experiences. Let's look at the system that I'd like to use for grading. Now, just as I've been wrapping up my thoughts on this, I happened to see Catch a Live over at Carrots and Olives, and I really like her system of ranking not just the ink, but also the nibs and the comfort of the pen. Loosely inspired by her, I'm going to set a system. This might change as as I gain experience l looking at my pens. I already have two purposes behind what I'm inking up every month. One is sort of writing and journaling and, and planning, and the other is making art, drawing, inking, watercolor, and that kind of thing. So I feel like I already have two very distinct functions for these ink color selections, but I'll be able to get into a little bit more of that as we go along. So I thought that my system would be for ranking would be rank the pen, rank the nib, and rank the ink. Now those, all of those obviously kind of intersect and have overlap, but I feel like as I go through the explanations, I'll be able to distinguish where it matters and, sorry, I can't write and talk at the same time, <laughs> give an indication why I'm splitting these three categories apart. Just a way of reflecting in a systematic way that I can track and look back at and use to further my understanding of my pens and my inks. There is one pen that I will not be ranking in this book because I've got it up here at the top and it is my Twisby Glow Green Extra Fine Nib loaded up with carbon plat Platinum Carbon Black. And this is my indelible ink. This is sort of my ink for drawing and, and watercoloring and whatnot. My permanent ink. It's quite useful for journaling also. I tend to go into my five-year Hobonichi with this pen because of course that's information that I don't want to lose. Okay, so there is my setup. I'm going to try to square this up for you. I have my swatch cards that I'll be able to share with you, and my pens are sort of off here to the right. These were the original swatches. It's pretty self-evident, and I'll talk about each of these pens as we are discussing. Okay, so I'm coming back after the fact and just going to walk you through all of the ratings. This will be a fairly short video, and um, because what I noticed about myself is when I'm writing these thoughts down and thinking my th way through, I cannot write and speak at the same time. So uh, we're coming back after the fact. Uh, I thought you might like to see some of these inks in, in long form journaling as I, and also in some of those art applications that I was referring to when I did my currently inked. So. First, let's look at the state of my pens at the end of the month. Uh -huh. Of the nine pens that I had inked in January, I wrote four of them dry, two of them I flushed and cleaned, and three still have residual ink. So let's talk about what my thoughts were about these inks. My favorite experience by far of the month was the Lamy 2000 Extra Fine with my little ink sample of Monteverde Chameleon. Let's see, this was a Goulet pen sample. This was originally two mil, so it looks like I still have about one mil. I feel like the pen is going to be empty at any moment. I am truly on vapors. There is nothing left showing in the ink chamber. So ha really happy about that. I was able to write through one mil. The pen I gave a 10, super comfortable pen to write with. I did end up bringing this to school with me. Um, and as long as I keep really good track of my little pen pouch, I'm increasingly more comfortable bringing my high-end gold nib pens to work with me. The nib gets a 10 plus. It's wet, it's consistent, it's silky, and uh, of course that has to do with the nib ink combination. So the ink I also gave a 10 plus. 
It's a rusty purple, very lubricated. I'll show you a long form writing sample. Long form writing sample. Where am I getting a shadow from? Uh, it's gorgeous. It is. I'm so happy with this ink. Um, I also used it multiple times throughout the month in terms of my in my dailies for my Hobonichi. This is one of my weeklies with that Monteverde ink. I've started to note here at the bottom of my page what pen and ink I'm using on those individual spreads. Loving that combination. That's absolutely a keeper. So let's look at the Pilot Vanishing Point Matte Black Extra Fine. This one I did right dry. It is it was a positive experience. I did end up flossing the nib to make it wetter. I feel like I can show you where that happened. This is where it, it happened. Um, after writing through my daily, I just had one of my brass sheets ready and I very, very carefully ran it through the nib. And indeed it is a little bit, a little bit more flowy. Better experience all the way around. That is the Orochizuku Ama Iro, and I have some long form journaling. Here's an example of it with my long form journaling, and I did note before I flossed the nib that it was very scritchy scratchy, and I came back again afterwards underneath the long form journaling, and just to give you a better indication of how you can improve very carefully even your gold nib pens if they are not writing to perfection. The overall rating for that one, pen I gave it an 8. I'm still more ambivalent than most people that review this pen. I feel that the ink tends to dry out. I feel like uh, the nib as an extra fine is on the scratchier side. I gave the nib a 7 because it tends towards scratchy and it's high risk, of course, flossing a gold nib pen. And the ink I gave a 10, wet, flowy, bright. This I do have a sample. The Narwhal Original Plus Melikara Purple was a big fail with the Diamine Ghost ink vent. Terrible, terrible experience dry, dry, dry. I ended up attempting a long form journal session and flushing the pen immediately. Why is this nib pen combo so unsatisfactory? This pen used to be a favorite of mine. I did strip the threads on the back and I was a little bit annoyed by the fact that this is a proprietary wrench that you need. It's a very thin wrench. I've misplaced it. I'm happier about the pen now that I know you can actually get at it from the front. The nib just unscrews. Back in love with this pen. I do enjoy this nib, just not with this ink. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible combination. The pen I gave a two, comfortable but terrible flow with this ink. Nib I gave a two, illegible, inconsistent with this ink, and the ink I gave an eight when applying with a brush as a wash drawing, but a two in any nib, I feel. I'll have to give it a try in, in, in a broad nib or a double broad or a stub, but in a f medium or smaller, the way it will lay down will always be illegible and difficult to read. Okay, the Twisby. Eco Tea Mint Blue, that plunger is already all the way down, so I just have about half of that remaining space. I will flush this. I'm just a little bit tired of the ink pen combination. It was pleasant to use for the month. Pen I gave a 10, comfortable, fun colors. Nib I gave a 10, wet, consistent flow, no issues, never had to floss it. This is a broad nib, super wet, wonderful with shimmer inks, and the ink 10, love this ink. It's kind of this goose poopy, greenish brown um, earthy color that I really love. And I will show you some of the long form journaling. Long form journaling with a little bit of wash. Very legible. Again, broad nib. I think in a medium or lower that would that might be a completely different experience. One of the weekly spreads I set up with that Queen and Castle. And then a few of the dailies as well. It's just a such a pleasurable ink pen combination. Next, Twisby in my Eco Tea Jade Rose Gold. With a medium nib, I use the Diamine Olive Swirl from the Ink Vent. 
I gave the pen a 10. Of course, this is my go-to cheapo pen. The nib I gave a 10, smooth steel nibs with excellent flow, and the ink I gave a 10. I love the olive green. This is a sample of the long form journaling. This is a sample in my daily Hobonichi. This is a sample in my daily pages. I did not use it for any of the Hobonichi weeklies up at the front of my book. The final three pens are the little Koikos that I used for my art project. I suppose I'll talk about that first. Try to stay out of that weird shadow that I've never noticed before. I just ended up having my sketchbook at school during one of our final exams, which are really, really boring to administer. Did a little pencil sketch study after a sergeant drawing of William Butler Yeats. It was originally in pencil. You can still see some of the pencil ghost lines below. And I came home and just experimented first with hatching with the three colors, the yellow, the blue, and the brown. Then I went in with washes to sort of pull some of those areas together. As an experiment, uh, this is really much, much smaller than I normally work. So I was pretty happy with the experience. It did show me that Perhaps the yellow that I inked up was, and by yellow I mean this Diamine Three Kings. It is a little bit bright for what I would intend. Even so, even though it comes out of the pen as this kind of almost uh, weak coffee or dark tea ochre. It, when you wash it out, you can see that it actually ends up being quite bright in the yellow. It makes, it did make a lovely green, the combination of the blue and the yellow. Yeah, but again, this is all just, it was just a very, very brief experiment. So the Koiko brass, I actually, this little brass pen, I give a 10. I love the heft. The nib, nib I give a 9. Easily the best nib of all my Kawakos. It has never been scratchy. It's always had good flow and I've always really adored that pen. The ink, bright yellow from Fine Nib. I really enjoy the writing. I did not do any long form journaling with that ink, but I did quite a bit in my Hobonichi. I did one of the weekly spreads. It is a lovely journal pen ink combination. And I did multiple dailies with this pen as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a good combination. Two more. The Kueka Sport Collection Macchiato with a broad nib. I had loaded it with a Diamine Dusted Truffle from Inkvent 2022. The pen, I give a 10 because it's that macchiato color. I love that kind of pinky taupe. Um, it's gorgeous. The nib, I gave a seven. It did require tuning and smoothing. And the ink, I gave a seven. I just wasn't feeling it. I'll show you long form journal. I really liked the shading actually on this one, but it seemed a little soft and mushy. It's not feathering, but it's just not, not really my favorite look for a journal ink. This is what it looks like on the daily pages of the Hobonichi A5 Avec. And I did not do any monthlies. So it didn't really reach for that that much. And finally, we have actually a really beautiful blue, the Kueko Sport Collection Mellow Blue Plastic Fountain Pen with a fine nib which I loaded with a Ferris wheel press storied blue. Um, the pen I give a six. It's handy, but this is one that I probably would be willing to part with this year. It is satisfactory, but it's just not anything special to me. The nib I gave a seven. It required tuning and smoothing. Reverse writing was unusable at first. And the ink I give a seven in this pen. It's just too pale for journaling. Uh, the blend, it makes beautiful, vibrant greens and wonderful, cool flesh tones in wash drawings. This is my sheet from where I tried one session of long form journaling, a little bit unsatisfactory. And after tuning and smoothing the nib, I did end up using it in my Hobonichi. Here's what it looks like in a in the Hobonichi planner, in an A5 planner. Um, it's nice, I like it. I actually really like the ink. I think I was not quite fair 
to it here. Um, really, I feel like I hit this pen across the board because I'm, I was so unimpressed by the scratchy nib. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me as I reflected on my fountain pens and inks for January 2023. I've sort of pulled out the coloring cards and ranked the inks in order of preference. So top of my list was easily the Monteverde Chameleon with the Lamy 2000. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous writer. Second favorite ink was the Pilot Orochizuku in Amairo. Just bright and gorgeous and I would love to try them in any nib size. I think this would really sing on any paper with any size nib if it can handle that Pilot Vanishing Point extra fine nib. My favorite of the ink vent samples that I loaded this month was easily the Olive Swirl. It's a chameleon ink. It is really gorgeous. I had it, of course, in a medium nib, but I feel like in a broad you would pick up more of those chameleon qualities. The Ferris Wheel Press Queen and Castle is all-time favorite. I've just had it in a pen for about three months now, so I'm ready for something new in terms of loading up that color family. These two are also awfully close in terms of inking for one color family. Uh, so I'll try not to do that again as I move forward through the year. I did enjoy the Ferris Wheel Press storied blue. I feel like I just need to have that in a wetter nib, in a smoother nib, and possibly in a medium or a broader nib. The Inkvent Three Kings was lovely in a pen for journaling. I preferred it in that function to as a uh, yellow for wash drawings. I feel like I didn't get enough of those ochre tones. It just went too bright, too chromatic in softer washes. Not that muted earthy yellow that I was looking for in my wash drawing. The dusted truffle, truffle was quite nice in terms of brown tones for a wash drawing. It would probably be better suited in a brush wash drawing with a little fountain pen on top in a broader nib. I'm happy to continue experimenting with this. It wasn't a complete fail, but it just was not very pleasant in that Kueco pen as a journaling pen. And the Diamine Ghost would be pleasant, I feel like, in a brush wash situation, but terrible, terrible in a pen. Might work in a broad. If you've ever loaded this in a broad, please comment below. I'd love to check out your video and thank you again. I will see you in my next video. Which, well, I have two in the can now, two that I'm editing. One is setting up my currently inked for February and the other is a flip through of my wanted journal and how that's going. Uh, my, this is the journal where I try to break that hedonic treadmill of acquiring quite so much stationary stuff in 2023. And it's going pretty well. January, I feel like, was overall more of a success than a fail. Yeah, so that's coming. Hit like and subscribe and ring that little bell if any of those things interest you, and I will see you then. Thanks. Ciao.